New study is suggesting many drowning deaths could be prevented if people learn to wait out the body's initial shock response to cold water. Most people drown in the first two to three minutes when the body goes into shock and panic kicks in. However, the study by Otago University showed through repeated dunking in cold water and mental training, more than 20 of the 40 participants were able to halve that panic time. Associate Professor Chris Button led the research. When you suddenly immerse up into your neck, so most of your body's in the water, the first thing you do is, is gasp. Then you start hyperventilating, so you're breathing very rapidly, two to three times as fast as you would normally. And what that does is it uh, builds up a lot of carbon dioxide in your blood, and that response also then causes your brain to get less blood in it. So, for numerous reasons, people start to get anxious and panic in those situations, and that's often where people do silly things like swallow water or make decisions to swim when they're, when they're not really capable of swimming. And this is in the first two to three minutes of yes. hitting water? so it happens very rapidly, but it also subsides after two to three minutes. In other words, you get breathing under control, your heart rate returns to relatively normal rates, I mean, the story's not over at that point. But is this the high-risk period for drowning initially anyway? Without in these a doubt, first two yeah, to three the minutes? majority of drownings are probably caused by that first two to three minutes in terms of people breathing in water. And then again, that exacerbates this response and it causes people to panic and they're unable to keep their head above the water. And you got the people involved to halve this response time? Yes, yeah, so that was a period of habituation. So they came into the uh, labs twice a day for a week and were willing to put themselves into 15 degree water and tread water for two minutes. And that was uh, sufficient to over half the cold shot response. So they got a sort of protective effect of being in the cold water, which was absolutely amazing to see. When you're carrying out research, you'll be lucky to find 2 to 3% changes, so 50% was amazing. And you think life-saving? Yes, I think so, yeah, because a lot of drownings occur because of cold shock, not necessarily hypothermia, which a lot of people might associate with being in the cold water, you know, that gradually the body gets really cold. and they. Yes, I think that most people assume mm-hmm. that you survive the first plunge, and it's only once tiredness and hypothermia set in, after a long period of time, maybe up to even an hour or two, that then you can't take it any longer and you die. Yes, and and I think that there's a fair amount of research building now that suggests that, in fact, there's this this first two to three minutes. And and I think this is why awareness of it is, is really important, because if you're aware that the effect, you know, does subside after a little while, then you can plan for that and you can be prepared should you be accidentally in the water when they hadn't expected to be. In cold water particularly? Mm, yeah, so I'm thinking of scenarios like fishermen on the rocks or trampers who are wading across a river slipping. So they hadn't necessarily intended to be up to their neck in water. But knowing this and putting into practice are two different things and your people had a week of training. That's right, yeah. So we, we trained them so they had that physical response and they were also given training in terms of mental skills. So how to relax them and set goals for themselves. And and that was really, really effective. But you're right, what we perhaps need to do as well is look just to see how awareness can help in that regard. You'd like to see this as part of children's swimming programs? Yes. One thing we haven't done directly so far is test children in this situation. So we've tested adults. We had to for for getting ethical clearance to do the research. But there's no reason to suspect that children wouldn't also benefit from this rapid habituation. But we'd need to do that very carefully. And, of course, the last thing we want to do is put a child off swimming by dunking them in cold water and they don't want to go to swimming lessons or anything like that. So it might be that primarily the awareness factor is something that we'd focus on with children. But, again, we need to see whether there'll be some benefit from the physical experience of being in cold water as well. And in the meantime, for adults, do you think if we're going to be around lakes and rivers, we should practice jumping into cold water pools anyway before we do that? Well, I think it could be done in a more subtle way than that. It doesn't necessarily need to involve jumping in the ocean in the middle of winter, even just spending a few extra seconds in the shower, you know, turning it on cold, or, or if you can jump into a cold bath, and jump out again, then you get, you're getting a partial habituation. And in fact, interestingly, in our research, a lot of the New Zealanders that participated 
didn't show to the same extent that some of the uh, other ethnicities that we tested, in particular I'm thinking of Asian and Polynesian students, who uh, seemed to show a more extreme response because they clearly weren't used to the cold water in the same way that some New Zealanders can be. That's Associate Professor Chris Button from Otago University School of Physical Education.